This is Moscone Center in San Francisco, home of political conventions, auto shows, and trade fairs. But for a few days this week, it's the center of the Macintosh world. Today, we'll take you on a guided tour of the 1989 Macworld Expo on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte Magazine, and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange. In print and online, Byte and Bix serve computer professionals worldwide with detailed information on new hardware, software, and technologies. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me this week here at the Macworld Expo is Jerry Burrell, editor-in-chief of Macworld Magazine. Jerry, you've been on the floor for a couple of days now. What are the most interesting new products or trends you've seen? Apple's announcement of its uh, 030 had to be the most important thing here at the show. That allows us to make the marketplace grow and it allows everybody else to develop new products. The four categories of things that I'd pick out of the entire show floor would be the communications devices that we see, a lot of growth there, color hard copy output, uh, that's very exciting. It's been holding up the whole marketplace. Color and video devices allow us to go out into the broadcast market from the Macintosh. And believe it or not, accelerator cards for the Macintosh. If you had to name, say, two hardware products that really caught your attention here, what would they be? Apple's SE030. That sets the tone for the market. It gives market opportunities for third-party developers, both hardware and software. And the Ricoh erasable optical drives that are in a couple of booths downstairs, that's a technology we saw in the next machine. It's here. It's shipping now. It's around $4,000 with the SCSI interface for Macintosh CPUs. Jerry, today we're going to take a look at that new Mac SE30. We'll see a new generation of desktop publishing and presentation software, including lots of products using color and sound. We'll see a new version of HyperCard called SuperCard, and we'll take a look at a new interactive CD-ROM game for the Macintosh. So stay with us. As they have grown, Macworld Expos have become flashier and glitzier, and San Francisco's Macworld Expo 89 continued the trend. This year's expo had all the elements of a major trade show, including music, magic, and massive crowds. The show was a launching pad for Apple's newest Macintosh, called the SE30. The new machine uses the full 32-bit Motorola 68030 processor, running at twice the clock speed of the first SE model. Apple claims the new Mac can run at up to four times the speed of the original SE, the SE30 comes with a 68882 math coprocessor, and it can be configured with up to 8 megabytes of RAM. In a clear concession to the real-world mix of computer hardware, the SE30's drives can read and write to both Macintosh and IBM standards. Incremental improvements were also seen in some traditional word processor packages. Claris showed off MacWrite 2 with new features intended to bridge the gap between word processors and desktop publishing products. MacWrite 2 features multiple columns, multiple documents, and page preview. The program will import files directly from Microsoft word processors, and it offers direct insertion and editing of Mac Paint and picked graphics. MacWrite 2 is available now and costs $249. Silicon Beach introduced its new version of HyperCard called SuperCard, a second-generation program that is HyperCard compatible. SuperCard features color drawing, painting, and auto trace, and a function called Super Editor allows users to reveal all the cards, menus, windows, and resources of the application. It is very similar to uh, HyperCard in that it uses the same metaphor of stacks and buttons and uh, cards. Okay but it is a second generation product essentially. We've gone a lot further. Full screen, uh, cards of any size, color, scrolling windows, all the things that people want in that, in that kind of product now. So we're gonna give them a lot more capabilities, menus, and it creates standalone applications. What that means is, you, so you, you can make a program look just like a Macintosh uh, program created with this authoring system. So another way of describing is an authoring system. For non-hypercard programmers, Texas Instruments demonstrated action, 
a graphic interactive software system to simplify developing Mac-based user interfaces. Action comes with a user interaction manager, a menu management system, and an interactive graphic editor. The program will be available in the first quarter of this year for around $2,000. While the big hardware news here is the introduction of the SE30, there's also a lot of attention being paid to peripherals, things like erasable optical drives, color printers, and accelerator boards. Although the original Macintosh was, and continues to be, a black and white machine, that hasn't stopped printer manufacturers from taking the next big step to color. Schlumberger Graphics unveiled a color postscript printer aimed at computer-aided design, engineering, and manufacturing markets. The 5232 color postscript printer takes true color Adobe postscript images and prints at 300 dpi using color thermal transfer technology. The machine can be configured for A-size or B-sized pages and connects to standard Apple Talk, Centronics, and serial interfaces. Prices start at around $17,000. Tektronix unveiled two color printers, including a low-end machine for budget-sensitive buyers called the ColorQuick inkjet printer. The ColorQuick is no speed demon, making you wait two minutes for a single page, but on the other hand, it will retail for under $2,500, a fraction of the cost of thermal transfer machines. Tektronix also introduced the color PostScript-compatible Phaser CPS for network users. The Phaser CPS has an Apple Talk network interface, a 40 megabyte hard disk, and it mimics an ordinary laser writer to other devices on the Apple Talk network, so pre existing software need not be altered. The Phaser CPS sells for $16,000 and will be available in the first quarter of this year. Eastman Kodak had a printer of a different color, a color video printer that provides continuous tone color prints from video and digital signals. The printer has a built-in frame store and generates a copy from memory in about 90 seconds. The unit will print up to 256 density levels for each of three colors at a resolution of 450 lines. Of to help bring Big artwork into the Macintosh, Thunderware took the wraps off a handheld scanner called Lightning Scan. The portable scanner will scan images up to four inches wide at variable resolutions of 100 to 400 dpi. Software comes with the scanner for image editing, contrast and brightness controls, and real-time display and rotation. Lightning Scan is available now and retails for $549. The original SE got a boost from accelerator card vendors who eagerly joined the race for faster and faster Macs. Dove Computer showed its latest in 68030 boards called the Marathon 030 SE. The board operates at 32 megahertz, and the company claims a performance increase of up to double that of a standard Mac SE. Dove also unveiled an O30 processor for the Macintosh 2 line called the Marathon O30X, offering twice the clock speed and an average performance improvement of 25%. The O30 SE sells for about $2,000, while the O30X lists for $1,600. Cards were also on hand at the TPS Electronics booth. TPS brought out its Smart Card ADB, a solid state memory card the size of a conventional credit card. The Smart Card encodes and reads up to 512 alphanumeric characters and can be re encoded up to 10,000 times. The company sees applications in the areas of medical records and patient ID, employee badges, and debit card systems. The Smart Card system sells for $525. We'll have more from Macworld Expo 89 in just a moment. There was progress in storage devices at this year's show. Microtech introduced a $1,200 high-capacity removable cartridge disk drive for Mac Plus, SE, and the Mac 2 series. The Microtech R45 boasts over 42 megabytes of capacity and a competitive access time of 25 milliseconds. The drive comes with dual SCSI ports for daisy chaining and a universal input power supply. For users with really big storage needs, Rico introduced a 600 megabyte erasable optical drive. The $3,800 drive has a 50 millisecond average access time and discs cost $250 a piece. The drive will be available in late March. 
Software for optical media surfaced occasionally at the show, mostly for graphics and audio applications. Activision introduced the Manhole Adventure game on CD-ROM, an interactive game developed from an original HyperCard version. The new CD-ROM game has 3D graphics, digitized voices, and an original music soundtrack. The Manhole is a point-and-click game. Clicking on an object takes players deeper into the game, revealing greater and greater detail. The $50 game has over 600 graphic screens and uses 55 megabytes of storage. The meager display of the original Macintosh has led to a big market for add-on CRT screens, but the Nexus company took the next step, introducing a series of gas plasma displays. The tarmac screens range in size from 15 to 30 inches in diameter and feature an integral touch panel in the front glass. The amber displays are designed for CAD CAM and industrial applications and are priced from $6,000 to $30,000. Greenspring Computers demonstrated its confidence in the Mac's industrial appeal by introducing a rack-mounted Macintosh 2 for real-time industrial control. The Rack Mac is packaged with a specialized I.O. controller board to provide for real-time I.O. multitasking and pipeline multiprocessing. According to the company, Rack Mac is adaptable to a wide spectrum of industrial uses from controlling robots to operating commuter trains. It consists of five... Berkeley Systems caught the ear of passing showgoers with the first Macintosh speech access package for the blind and visually impaired. Outspoken is a mostly software package that transforms the Mac's visual user interface into an audible one, accessible through the keyboard. The program reads the screen of text-based displays and vocalizes by line, word, or letter. Keyboard combinations take the place of mouse operations, and the program includes shortcuts for manipulating standard user interface features. Outspoken sells for $395 and comes with a Braille quick reference card and embossed representations of the Mac screen. The Macintosh has always been a graphics machine, and graphics continue to drive the Mac, only now the Macintosh is more than just crisp pictures and desktop publishing. It's becoming the machine for professional quality design and layout. The Mac's artistic potential has attracted the eye of the advertising industry, both for design and publishing. Multi-ad services introduced Multi-Ad Creator, a professional ad layout program that brings together drawing and printing functions. The program is intended for layout and typographic control of single-page documents in either black and white halftones or color. You can rotate text, you can rotate graphics, you can fit text within an object, you can wrap it around an object. There is a matrix command that allows you to create a particular uh, coupon, for instance, and you can determine the area that you want to fill and it will automatically fill that entire area from the cursor um, with those particular um, coupons and will retain the attributes of the text that you have placed in them. Desktop advertising publishers hope to repeat the success of traditional desktop publishing by making ad agencies think twice before sending their copy out to the printer. Well, I feel there's a whole industry that really has been compromised. There's 25,000 ad agencies in the country and there are over 10,000 newspapers and there are about 100,000 retailers that put together ads uh, locally every single day. And they're using products right now that they really have had to compromise to do what they specifically wanted to do. In the battle to win over graphic designers, Cricut Software added color to its Cricut Paint program. Cricut Color Paint incorporates many of the same tools as its monochrome cousin, the feature called Fresh Paint allows the user to create a shape and manipulate it as an object or edit the shape as a bitmap. Color images, objects, shapes, and textures can all be saved as custom tools, and the image can be viewed at two different levels of magnification simultaneously. Cricut Color Paint is due to ship in the first quarter of this year and will sell for around $300. For artists in the industrial and research worlds, several vendors showed advanced packages for computer-aided design and engineering. Schlumberger Technologies introduced McBravo, a high-end package for the Macintosh 2. 
The Bravo software, originally designed for VAXs and special purpose workstations, includes modeling and detailing programs. The modeler is a 3D mechanical design program that transforms two-dimensional designs into three dimensions with a drawing tool called a work plane. Work planes are created separately and then combined to create a 3D object. McBravo Modeler sells for about $1,500, and the drafting package called Detailer is available for about $2,000. A company called 2AI claimed to have the first image processing software for the Mac 2. Called Bigmage, originally designed for scientists and physicians, Bigmage has extensive geometric, logical, and histogram functions. The program also features animation and magnified views and morphological operations such as reconstructed images and skeleton views. Big Maj sells for $990. Making the leap from machine parts to designer labels, Motocad of Los Angeles introduced a CAD package for fashion designers. Motocad runs on the Mac 2 and includes modules for textile and fashion design, grading, and for pattern making. Fabric simulation tools allow the user to stretch a fabric and to add pleats or folds. A function called Motodrape can simulate how a finished garment would look on a live model. Crossfield of England filled its booth with some sophisticated publishing and page layout software, bringing the Macintosh one step closer to the professional printer. Crossfield demonstrated the Lightspeed color layout system for graphic design on the Macintosh 2. Lightspeed can incorporate photography, line art, illustrations, headline type, logo types, and text. The program can crop, move, and resize scanned elements as they are integrated into a layout. Pages can be any size up to 444 inches square. All elements, including type, can be rotated, skewed, stretched, condensed, mirrored, and flipped. For output, the user can choose from PostScript laser printer, color thermal transfer, or go directly to an electronic color prepress system. One of the earliest names in desktop publishing history, Adobe Systems, made its regular appearance at a booth manned by Adobe president and PostScript inventor John Warnock, who reflected on the sudden growth and maturity of microcomputer publishing. I think it's spreading out and it's, it's, starting, it's starting to become a sort of a part of the fabric of just the computer business in general. And so it's, it sort of started out as a niche area, and now it's sort of broadening its base into all aspects of visual communication within corporations. Adobe introduced an automated tracing program called Streamline for converting bitmap images into Adobe Illustrator files. Once converted, images can be exported as is to other page layout programs or edited with Adobe Illustrator software. Streamline will convert line drawings using either outline tracing, centerline tracing, or a combination of both. Streamline sells for $395. A lot of people can't draw, <laughs> but they would like to use drawings in their publications. And, and Streamline is a package that allows you to take a, a scanned black and white piece of artwork like a logo or something and scan it in and then Streamline will turn it into an Illustrator file that you can then edit. So you don't have to be nearly as creative. Adobe's president also mused on desktop publishing's critical contribution to the success of the Macintosh. It's a very highly integrated platform and because it is and because it's so strong in the text desktop publishing arena, it has a very strong niche in that portion of business. If, uh, if you ask me, uh, you know, if, if that still is very strategic to it, I would say very definitely, because a lot of the Macintosh's credibility is because of that aspect. Altsys Corporation had a different way of simplifying life for micropublishers with a program called Keymaster. Keymaster creates high-resolution PostScript fonts from Macintosh artwork. PostScript quality drawings and logos can be dropped into documents and manipulated like fonts. Keymaster imports images in EPS format from Aldous Freehand and Adobe Illustrator and in PICT format from other object-oriented programs. Keymaster was designed to address the problem of people having to continually cut and paste artwork that they've got in existing libraries into their documents. Now, instead of having to cut and paste, you can import your artwork, which you generated in, say, Freehand's or Illustrator and saved in the encapsulated PostScript format or from any program that will generate a picked file format 
I can now import your complex piece of artwork as a single character in a new font. This is a font that is a Macintosh font in the strictest sense of the word, which once installed in the system is available from any application, just like any other font. Our coverage of Macworld Expo 89 continues in just a moment. Mass Microsystems presented its own picture show within a show at Macworld with a full-color special effects video processor board. The ColorSpace FX card provides the Macintosh 2 with real-time video and image manipulation. ColorSpace FX can squeeze and shrink a picture, create mirror and kaleidoscope effects, and zoom in and zoom out from the image. ColorSpace FX is compatible with NTSC, PAL, and CCAM video in any combination. The board converts the interlaced video signal into a non-interlaced RGB video compatible with a Macintosh monitor. ColorSpace FX is priced at under $3,000 and is due to ship in the second quarter of the year. Moving directly into the professional world of television production, Julian Systems demonstrated EditWorks, a sophisticated videotape editing and production system. EditWorks is based around a rack-mounted Macintosh 2 that controls everything from time code calculation to edit list management and budgeting. The mouse-based system takes the job of selecting video pictures on a video screen and drops it into the picture-based interface of a Macintosh screen. For Mac users more concerned with computer networks than television networks, Dana Communications introduced an entry-level local area network marrying Macs with IBMs. The DanaNet consists of a server-based network operating system and interface card for the server working over local talk or Ethernet cabling. DanaNet is a special version of Novell netware customized for the Macintosh. DanaNet can connect up to 100 Macs and or IBM PCs and comes bundled with DanaMail, a Mac to MS-DOS electronic mail package. DanaNet will be available in April and prices start around $1,200. Finally, for users more interested in transporting data than sending it, Ex Machina of New York unveiled its WristMac personal information system. The WristMac is a digital watch that can download files from your Macintosh through a HyperCard-based software package. Each file can contain up to 79 entries, consisting each of two 12-character lines for a total of 80 entries in the watch. Typical files contain messages which can be timed to alarms, schedules, or phone numbers. The watch connects to the computer through a cable that attaches to either of the Mac's serial ports. To load information, a HyperCard stack is included that simulates the watch's face on the Mac monitor. Wrist Mac retails for $225. And that is Macworld Expo 89. I'm Stuart Chaffe for the Computer Chronicles. random access file this week. You've been hearing for years that you almost have a mainframe in that new super duper micro on your desk. Well, you now can have a mainframe in your desktop. Opus Systems has announced its new personal mainframe series 400. It's a board containing the Motorola 88000 wrist chip with four megabytes of RAM. That's enough to run Unix on your standalone micro. Unix comes bundled with the board. The cost is around $5,000. Sanyo, Data General, and Everex are also announcing standalone 88000 PCs. The price? The to be around $10,000. Microsoft nudged closer to the Unix world last week, buying a 20% interest in the Santa Cruz operation. A major Unix software house, a recent market research study, predicts a 29% annual growth rate for Unix systems, compared to a 12% growth rate for all other systems. News for speed freaks, Intel has revealed details of its new N10 super chip. It's a risk-based chip that operates at 50 megahertz. It features some parallel processing and a 64-bit data bus. And Hitachi announced what it called the world's fastest 32-bit CPU. The company says the chip can do 70 million calculations per second, twice as fast as its previous chip. 
Well, three Mac Expos have come and gone since its announcement, but Informix has now finally released its much tatted wings program. It's described as a graphic spreadsheet combining elements of HyperCard and Excel. It's priced at $399. Borland has released a new special student edition of its Quattro spreadsheet program, and McGraw-Hill has announced that it will bundle the new Quattro with selected college textbooks. The news was not so good for Leading Edge last week. After announcing plans to sell the company to PC systems, Leading Edge filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, found itself under investigation by the FBI, and ended up as a defendant in a lawsuit filed by six computer dealers, claiming they had paid for computers they never received. Also bad news at the source. The online service says it is laying off one-fourth of its staff. Source subscribers have plummeted to 50,000 after hitting a high of 80,000 two years ago. If you have an hour to kill at O'Hare in Chicago, you can now spend the time online. The airport is installing new data access payphones with standard female phone jacks, so you can plug the old laptop right in. Finally, there may be a computer in the audience at this year's Academy Awards ceremony. One of the nominees for Best Animated Short is Ten Toy, an animated film created completely by computer at Pixar and San Rafael, California. That's it for this week's Random Access. I'm Cynthia Steele. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte Magazine, and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange. In print and online, Byte and Bix serve computer professionals worldwide with detailed information on new hardware, software, and technologies. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.